Sue Gray has said she has found the behaviour at some of the 16 gatherings she investigated difficult to justify. There were serious failures to observe the high standards they expected of others, a culture of thoughtlessness for what others were going through, a failure of leadership and judgment, both at Number 10 and the Cabinet Office, resulting in events happening that should not have done or developed in a way they never should have been permitted to. Excessive consumption of alcohol within the workplace, which would be completely inappropriate in any of our workplaces, was almost the norm. Conclusions are one thing, of course, polite as they are, though I suppose if Sue Gray's wording were any more damning, she'd find herself privatised by Nadine Dorries. But digging into the examples, the detail is much more damning, especially when you consider the context of the pandemic alongside them. We had one of the worst death rates in the world when COVID hit, but we had to take it on the chin. Whilst we were left to do just that, cheese and wine parties were being had. The Prime Minister's birthday, drinking themselves silly to the point one individual at a leaving do on the 18th of June 2020 threw up and a fight broke out. A karaoke machine had been brought to that same event as well by the Director General for Propriety and Ethics. You couldn't make it up. Feel for the poor staff who had to clean that sort of mess up and cop abuse whilst they're at it, because that features in this report too. And whilst the second wave hit around Christmas, killing more people than the first wave did, they were planning secret Santas instead of planning to deal with the crisis. When we were texting loved ones goodbyes as they were passing away, they were WhatsApping each other about getting away with it. Across the 20-month period Sue Gray examined, there was no respect for how we were affected as long as they could have their wine time Fridays. Junior civil servants felt they were safe to engage in this behaviour because their seniors were. And it's since emerged, not in this report, that one of the reasons more juniors were given fines is because they filled the Met's questionnaires out and senior figures just didn't bother. Where was the follow-up to that? Johnson lied to Parliament about not knowing about the events on the 13th of November, and he lied to the House by saying all guidance was being followed when they seemed to engage in a culture of flouting the rules whenever they could. The ministerial code is clear that Johnson should resign, yet as the final arbiter of that code, he won't, of course, enforce it on himself. In short, the Grey Report damns Johnson, but has no power to force his resignation to do anything about him, and he lacks the moral fibre to offer it himself. He says he takes full responsibility for it, but he's a craven, law-breaking coward, smirking like a naughty schoolboy over this, because he's still getting away with it.